This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. To let you be joined by unbeaten super lightweight talent Omar Juarez, just a couple of days out from his next fight. Omar, first and foremost, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Ready to go, man. I'm excited. <laughs> That's good to hear. Now, you are back in action this weekend on Fox, for, for anyone wondering, against Elias Araujo. Uh, he's an experienced fighter, never been stopped. I think he's done something like 150 rounds in his professional career. Is it on your mind to be the first guy to stop him this weekend? Is it on your mind to make that statement on such a big platform? Oh, absolutely. That, that's always in my mind. I mean, I, I've been dreaming about stuff like this. But, you know, I'm not going to look for the knockout. I'm not. I'm really looking to outbox him, make him look bad, making him feel that, you know, all the dedication and sacrifice that I put into this training camp, into this sport, really. I know that he is not on my level. And, you know, mentally, emotionally, I'm, I feel like I'm unstoppable right now. I've left no stone unturned in the training camp. And that's how I know that, you know, this fight's going to go my way. And I'm excited, man. I really am. I know it's my first 10-rounder, but I feel like ever since I started professional, I've always been, you know, a late-round kind of type of fighter. So I'm excited, man. Still incredibly young, of course, 21 years old, uh, still a relative novice to the professional game. What is it that you've been working on ahead of this fight that, that makes you feel so much confidence? What do you think you've improved on? I, I feel like it's being comfortable, whether it's on the outside or on the inside, whatever it is that they have to bring to the table. I feel like I've learned to adapt a lot better. You know, I've learned to stay calm throughout the rounds, been able when to take my breaths, when to not to take my breaths, what punches to hit, you know, where to hit. Stuff like that, just the small things in the pro game that I really didn't know in the amateurs and even in my previous fights. But now I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm growing as a fighter and I feel very, very comfortable in there. And, you know, this fight, it's, it's, it's really going to help me, you know, develop more as a fighter. Now, some fighters I speak to, Omar, they, they like to study as much footage as they possibly can on an opponent. Other fighters, they don't even bother. They leave it to the team. I was wondering, what kind of a fighter are you? Have you watched much of your opponent? Is that something you do? Uh, watch maybe one or two fights, maybe once. After that, you know, I knew what I had to work on. I knew what I didn't have to work on. And I feel like I know what he's going to bring to the table, and I'm ready for it. What can we expect from him, then? What kind of fight can we expect as well? I know that he's going to come at me. He's going he's gonna to come at me strong because that's where he feels like he's doing something. He feels like where once he puts his fighters, once he puts his opponents on the, on the ropes, he's going to try to take advantage, you know, use – use his muscles, you try to rough you up. But like I tell everybody else, you know, he hasn't fought me. He hasn't fight. He hasn't fought somebody like me. And I don't care how many rounds he's fought, or who he's fought, how many fights he has, how old he is, you know, no matter what, I always tell myself the same thing with every fighter is that he's never fought me. And that's exactly why I'm so confident in this fight. No, Omar, I appreciate we're in the COVID era and it hasn't been quite the same for many fighters without the fans, etc. I know back home you do have a good following, though. I've seen all the signs of people in trucks when you're coming home after fights. How's the reaction been back home to you? Obviously, you're stepping up into a 10-rounder. PBC on Fox, a huge platform as well. What has it been like back home? It's, it's, it's been awesome, man. It's, I feel like a superhero back at home and it's a blessing. It really is. No matter what, I told myself when I started my career that I wanted to give back. You know, that's the way I was raised. My father, my mother, they always told me that no matter how far you get in your career, always remember where you're from. And, you know, I mean, it's not really something that they told me that, that I always tell myself. It's just more like anytime I leave Brownsville, I'm like, man, I want to go back home. And I'll come to Los Angeles. I go to Vegas. I'll go anywhere. And I'll be like, you know, there's no place like home. Even though we don't have much, we don't have, you know, only 250,000 people. We don't, we don't have a lot of stuff. You know, it's a small city. But at the end of the day, my family's there. I grew up there. So to me, there's no place like home. And I always told myself, no matter what, I'm always going to give back in any way I can. And that's exactly why I go to schools motivating the youth and stuff like that. So it's, it's given me a big, you know, following. But it's something that really helps me when I enter the ring. Every time I enter the ring, I'm with a big smile on my face because I always, I feel like I have a city behind me. You touched on it there, Omar. It's something I wanted to talk to you about as well. Away from the ring, uh, even at such a young age, you, you do do as much of community work as you can. I've seen photos of you doing motivational speeches down at, the, down at your local schools to the kids. I've seen you providing food packages as well. Why is it so important for you to give back even at such an early stage of your life and your career? Is it, was that something that was instilled in you from a young age? Oh, absolutely. I mean, ever since I was younger, I always wanted what was best for other people, not just myself. And I feel like there's a lot of people that are in need. So I told, I, you know, I told myself as soon as I graduated high school, uh, I, I was 17. I, yeah, I was 17. I graduated at 16, but I had already turned 17 once the new school year had already started. 
And ever since I was younger, uh, usually fighters listen to, to music to, you know, to pump them up and stuff like that. But I would listen to motivational speeches by uh, Eric Thomas, David Goggins, even Muhammad Ali, Cuz the Model, stuff like that. And I was like, wow, like, you know, if somebody's words can inspire me, motivate me, you know, push me to push that extra mile, that extra round, even when I'm cutting weight sometimes, you know, if somebody's words can inspire me to do that, you know, why can't I do that to somebody else? And so as soon as I graduated high school, I wanted to graduate early uh, to preserve my career already. So I graduated and I said, you know what? I got together with my team. We got together, uh, together with the city of Brownsville and they helped me get into the first elementary school. And then from there, it was literally just through word of mouth where it just started spreading, spreading. We did all the elementaries, well, actually almost all the elementaries, uh, the middle schools, and then we got to the high schools and eventually it was just through word of the mouth. We we're going all over the place and it's a blessing, man. I mean, there's some times where I would have to motivate like three schools. I would have to be there at six in the morning to motivate three schools all day and then spar afterwards. And it's something that I never, it's never that I, that I dread doing, you know, it's always something I was like, all right, let's go do it. You know, even if I have to do it alone, let's go do it. Give me that microphone and I'll never stop talking. You know, it's just something that I wish I could have had when I was eight years old. Cause that's what I feel like. Every time I speak to the kids, I look at young Omar, you know, trying to accomplish his dreams, the young Omar that, that shy kid, you know, in the back of the class that nobody listened to that people took as a joke, you know, people that just didn't believe in me, you know, nobody believes in a boxer, really. It's something unusual and not everybody hears, you know, especially the teachers, but for the teachers that told me that I wouldn't be anything in life, for them to come to me and be like, man, I always believe in you, stuff like that. It's, that is really what motivates me and inspires me because I'm like, wow, you know, I did it and I can do more. But I love giving back to my community, man. Do you think in a way knowing you're going in and you're inspiring these kids that are going to be in the same situation you were when, when you were that age, do you think your legacy away from the ring could end up meeting just as much, if not more, than, than what you go on to achieve in your professional career? Well, absolutely. I, I, I want to motivate athletes all over the world. I, I feel like the human spirit is the strongest thing in the world. And if I could uplift anybody's human spirit, help them with their mental health, help them with accomplishing their dreams, whatever it is they want to be in life, if I can help them, what I want is when I'm old and, you know, already dying, I want somebody to come up to me and say, I didn't give up because of you. That, that's going to be, you know, my goal in life. Oh, my final one, because I appreciate your day away from, from a weigh-in. The last thing you want to be doing is sitting here rambling on me over Zoom. Uh, in your <laughs> nah, division, you're good. The, the super lightweight division, I did want to ask you, we have got a huge fight coming up in your division. All the belts on the line, Jose Carlos oh, yeah. Ramirez, Josh Taylor from my neck of the woods as well. Who wins and how? I feel like Josh Taylor's going to outbox him, man. After I saw that, that pro grace fight, I, I see how smart of a fighter he is. But the thing with Ramirez is that if he gets you in the inside, that's, that's his fight. And I feel like Josh Taylor's not going to let him get in the inside. He's going to use his boxing IQ and, and outbox him. But, I mean, it's just one of those fights that you're like, man, I, it's, they're very, very talented fighters. You just want to see what happens. But I, I'm going with Taylor on this one. And final, final word, Omar, for those that are going to be tuning in on PBC on Fox, for those from our neck of the woods in the UK as well that might be watching you for the first time, what would you say to them? What can we expect to see Saturday night? No, thank you guys so much for all the support. And, uh, man, just watch me do my thing. I've been doing this for almost almost all my life, and I'm excited, man. I really am really to, ready to win this, but, you know, with style, ready to do this. <laughs> all right, Omar. Ready thank for you the so toughest. Much for your time. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. Best of luck with the fight on Saturday. I'm sure we'll catch you very soon. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, Omar. All the best.